I want to thank you, Chloe, for joining me today. You are one of my PLIC graduates. And so we were gonna take a little time and talk today about your experience with PLIC. And I wanted to started with, start with having you give us a little bit of background about yourself and how you found pharmacy and decided to go into pharmacy school. Okay, great. Um, yes, hi, my name is Chloe. Um, I initially got interested in pharmacy when I was participating in a summer camp um, in Fort Smith, Arkansas, which is where I grew up. And we were able to shadow all the different departments of the hospital. So we went to radiology and surgery and nursing and labor and delivery and just got a little bit of exposure of what each different department does. And one of the activities that we did is pharmacists came and sort of told us about their role in the hospital and they had us make some little IV bags and I realized that I'm very squeamish in some of the surgeries and things. And I thought, okay, I know I really like healthcare, but I don't know how I'm going to fit in to healthcare if I can't do all the hands-on activities. Um, so that's when I initially became interested in pharmacy. And then I went on to do pharmacy camp at UAMS in Little Rock, Arkansas. And there I really got to see all of the different fields or like aspects of pharmacy that are available besides hospital and retail even. Um, so after that, I got a job at, uh, as a technician at a Walmart and it was through a family friend who met her husband at Southwestern and they are both pharmacists. So she told me all about Swasu and her great experience there. She was a brand new graduate and that's sort of how I got introduced to pharmacy and Swasu because I'd never heard of Swasu <laughs> growing up in Arkansas until I heard of pharmacy. And then all of a sudden I was like, how weird that all of these pharmacists over here came from Swasu. Um, so I applied to undergrad at Swasu and that's where I went for undergrad. And then that was um, the only pharmacy school that I um, applied to and I got in. So that was exciting. How was like, the transition from your undergraduate program into the pharmacy, your first semester into pharmacy? What was that transition like for you? It felt very smooth. I was really grateful that I had done undergrad at Swasu prior to pharmacy school because I was familiar with the campus. I already knew a lot of my classmates and the um, being still in the chemistry, pharmacy, and physics building, I was familiar with where to go and things like that. So I really liked having that um, and it felt very seamless, um, the transition. And you finished your program now. So when did you graduate? When did you start and when did you graduate? I started the pharmacy program in fall of 2016 and then I just graduated in May of 2020. Um, and I just began residency. I'm over in uh, Tucson in, at Tucson Medical Center in Arizona. So what, once you got into the School of Pharmacy, what actually interested you in PLIC? Why did you start to explore that and decide to apply? So it, there's really the, the two main like dual degree programs. There's the MBA, PharmD, the business side, and then it's, there's PLIC and leadership, innovation, and quality outcomes. And I really do not thrive in business classes. That doesn't really get me excited and passionate about things. So I heard about PLIC and I've always been interested in leadership. I was an orientation leader at Swasu and involved in various organizations and things. So I've always enjoyed being involved. But when I heard about PLIC, I was very interested in learning more about what kind of an actual leader I am um, and how to enhance those skills. And then for innovation and quality outcomes, I don't feel like anyone up to that point in my career had really introduced this idea of innovation, especially with school. It's very much like, here's the information, you're going to learn it, and then we're going to test you on it. There's not a lot of creativity, um, even with projects and things. It's always been very structured. Here's X, Y, Z, and you do this. Um, and so when I heard about this 
class or program that you know speaks to innovation and how to be creative and problem solve i was very, very interested in that um so those are the two main reasons that i got involved and then um quality outcomes i like i knew what it meant but i wasn't sure what exactly we would be doing with that when i initially started the program um and now i realize that that is so important and probably one of like the most important things in healthcare right now is how do we measure what we're doing and show that the you know, interventions and other things that we're doing are actually making a difference. So let's talk about your experience in the classes. So we have the three different classes that you take and they're kind of structured in different ways. What was that like for you? What did you learn? What surprised you? So for the leadership class, that was really fun to do all of the like self assessments and sort of figure out like, oh, these are my strengths and my weaknesses, um, which was very helpful for all of the interviews that I did. <laughs> um, but learning, okay, I'm good at this, or, you know, I need to work on this. Oh, I didn't realize that this is how I learn. And this is how I lead. And maybe other people don't learn and lead like that. So how can I tailor my approach to include other people and their preferences. Um, so that class, learning about that and learning about people around you, I feel like it made me a lot more just aware of working together with other people. Like it's one thing because it was in more of a classroom setup, you know, just like, oh, this is fun. You know, I'm this type of person, you're this type of person. Um, but it really came full circle like in the workplace once you are putting these things into practice. Um, so in the class, the leadership class, I really enjoyed that, having those discussions, kind of learning different perspectives and things. Um, definitely innovation was my favorite class. Uh, I really enjoyed the summer like immersive group aspect of it, that it was very much like you came in and you got to work together and come up with things on your own, design your own um, problems and solutions, actually go through. I, I like hands-on learning. So it was fun to learn something and then be able to apply it in a process. Actually taking an issue, doing the brainstorming, putting all the sticky notes up and developing your own solution or um, we came up with our mentor program. So designing our own program and then getting to do it like that almost, I don't think there was another situation where I felt like in school, we got to develop a program and then implement it in that fashion. Um, and that was really empowering. It's exciting as you're sort of transitioning from student to professional to actually be able to have your ideas and then just go with it. No, I don't think there was another opportunity that I had that. Um, and then, so lastly was for quality. And um, this class really challenged me. It had a little bit more of the business aspect coming up with a complete plan, calculating your return on investment. How are you gonna show that you were effective? Um, and it gave me a lot of appreciation for <laughs> A lot of um, just the measurements and things like at work, I understood like, oh, this is why we have to report these numbers or, oh, this is why, you know, I think that I'm doing a good job at work, but based on the numbers, like our interventions weren't effective. Um, so in that class, it was very, very challenging, but um, I liked that I was sort of forced to sit down and do this work, even if I won't. I'm sure I'll, I'll be using it, but even if I'm not always on the more administrative side coming up with measures and things, it's nice to know how that works to sh help you better be a healthcare practitioner. So you go through this program with a cohort and it's a smaller cohort, although your cohort had a couple of, I mean, you were 12, so you were a little bit larger than the normal one. What was that like for you? Did your cohort gel immediately? Were there any kind of challenges you had to overcome? And did the program actually help you do that effectively? So we didn't, we 
were in our regular pharmacy class prior to this. So we all, except there were a few that were not in our specific class, but you know, the College of Pharmacy is a, a small world. So you are at least familiar with everyone. Um, and initially there were no, no issues, especially in the leadership class where it was more of just like a discussion. I don't feel like there was ever any real um, conflicts. Um, once we got into innovation and we had to make decisions as a team that were going to affect all of us, then that's when we started to see some different, I don't know, I mean, I guess they were conflicts, but like there were some very strong opinions and <laughs> uh, it's very interesting to see how people work together as a group and different aspects of their personalities that come out. Um, so we we did have some bumps in the road but uh, I do feel that the program itself helped us overcome that because it sort of it wasn't like you know you would just step in and solve things for us like we had to sit there with each other and figure out how are we going to come up with a plan together and we're all going to have to do it and even if it wasn't the idea that you know, I wanted to do, or Caroline wanted to do, or Aaron wanted to do, it was like, this is what the majority voted, and this is what we're going to do, so now you have to do it. So I think it was a very good lesson um, in how to resolve conflicts as professionals, and just be okay with, like, you're not always going to get to do everything exactly the way that you want to do it. But I felt like we had the tools and resources, like we could come to you with our problems and you could provide guidance without being like, well, this is how I'm going to solve it. So you're, you were a part of a smaller cohort that engaged in an extra research activity with the Pharmacy Quality Alliance and the Opioid Project, which resulted in a white paper for the organization and posters. And there were three of you that actually took advantage of that opportunity amongst the group. Do you feel like, what did that add for your overall program and understanding and kind of moving into rotations and beyond? So that was probably the hardest thing I've ever done, <laughs> but probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done, which unfortunately those things usually go hand in hand. <laughs> they do. Um, I had no idea what I had signed up for when I agreed to participate in the research. Um, just as far as I had never done any kind of project like that on that type of scale, um, especially looking at it from like a timeline, I had never done a project where time management and scheduling and like the, the length of time of the project, I hadn't done anything um, a longitudinal, that's the word I was looking for, a longitudinal project like that. Um, so that, that helped me in a number of ways because I was working with two of my good friends and it was sometimes difficult to, you know, be on track or say like, Hey, have you done what you're supposed to do? Or, um, <laughs> with two of your friends that you're with and you see all the time. So that was difficult. Um, I feel that it helped me significantly for the time management as far as like, yes, I was still in pharmacy school for a good portion of the time that we were working on the project. Yes, I was still working as an intern at Walmart too. And so being able to balance um, actually, you know, getting everything done on time and doing a good job. Um, and besides that, we, as pharmacy students, unless you seek out a research project, I had no exposure to research or writing in a scientific style for a journal. It's very different to write something like that than it is, you know, an essay or whatever other kind of academic writings that we've had to do it it was like oh we need to format it and then the three of us wrote different sections and we all have different language styles and so making it all cohesive um 
And then besides that, I just, I didn't have really a lot of experience, like pulling the data. We did a retrospective literature analysis. And so normally we had always just been given an article and then we had to just evaluate the article. I had never gone out to search for articles to find information that I needed from them. Um, so as far as like the just working up the project, that was a lot of stuff that I don't feel like I would have been exposed to any other way. And then actually putting together the posters, doing the presentations, submitting the paper, like I just, it was invaluable experience. And um, just, I mean, being able to go through the process, like I realized when I was at the, the mid-year meeting for other residents, like, or for all the other aspiring pharmacy residents, I should say, um, you really can see that, you know, just because we all have a PharmD, it's all, we all have very different experiences. And I felt like those experiences really shaped and made me stand out to other applicants. I think I took a turn there, but. <laughs> so how did it, uh, how did it, impact in rotations not just the article but when we look back at the whole PLIC program once you move into rotations um, you really aren't engaged directly with the PLIC program anymore it's more about how you take what you know and how that might influence how you interact in your different rotations were there rotations where you really felt like what you learned in PLIC helped you in a direct way or even just helped you understand what was being discussed where you wouldn't have, if you hadn't had the program? There were, um, you know, depending on the rotation, it applied differently. Um, but I definitely felt like the, the leadership class particularly, you know, it's difficult to walk into a work environment where you're the only new person and everyone else is accustomed to working with each other. So I believe that it helped me assimilate into different workplaces a little bit more easily. Um, just sort of being able to identify like, oh, they are this type of person. They operate this way. This is their style of leadership. Um, instead of taking things personally or getting frustrated, like I felt like that just general understanding helped me in all of my rotations um, because it's difficult every month restarting at a new place and a new thing. It's like, I just figured out what was going on at one place. Um, so that's how I feel like leadership fit in. Um, as far as innovation goes, it very much depended on the rotation site, how willing they were to be open to other ideas. Um, some, they had a very, structured regimented rotation and there really wasn't much room for input um so that one maybe not as directly applicable just based on how things were structured um however sometimes there were projects or just situations where you know they'd be like hey we need to do this health fair what do you think we should do and it's like i don't know <laughs> So then I felt like I was able to use those tools to kind of be like, okay, well, you know, this is our problem. Let's just throw out random ideas and really learning and having that prior experience of not, you know, shooting down ideas right away. I think that's something that I know I was very guilty of as far as an innovative process being like, no, that won't work. We can't do that. I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, so that was helpful to have that mindset of like, well, just, well, let's really think about this. Is there a way we could do something else different to make this happen? Um, so I'm trying to, I don't, I can't think of a specific example of actually like using that on rotations. Um, but I know that at least the background was helpful in my approach to things. Um, and then for quality outcomes, that was evident in all of my rotations. Um, you know, if we were in a community setting, um, we all know about all the DIR fees and PBMs and how do we get paid for what we're doing. 
Um, I had a rotation at Medic Pharmacy where they have a very significant uh, like diet and lifestyle presence for their patient population. And so it was very much like, how are we going to use this as a revenue stream? How can we measure that we're really helping people? How can we show that our interventions are being effective for people, especially in something where lifestyle changes are involved. Those are very difficult to get people motivated and excited to do it. Um, and it's something that helps health in every aspect. So why wouldn't a pharmacy be involved in that? Um, so they had a lot of really cool programs that they were working on um, that were different um, ways to get reimbursed as pharmacy. Um, and they had a man from CPESN, I think that's the yeah. um, thing. And he came and we did a health fair and we were doing screenings and just, I felt like that fit into quality because it was how you know, we were trying to group up with other pharmacies to get better buying power, share new ideas on how to stay like, relevant as a business. Um, so that was one of the ways I felt like quality helped. And then of course, all the star ratings and things at community pharmacies, it was nice to be able to know. Prior to Plague, I just always thought that was really annoying. Why are we being measured like this? Um, and so it helped because regardless of whether or not you want to be measured, everyone is going to be measured in pharmacy. So I think just being open to it and having a good attitude and understanding how it works so that you can improve your scores was huge. So once you moved through rotations and moved into kind of the residency application process, how did that play into PLIC? Did places recognize PLIC? Did they ask you questions? Do you think it had an impact on landing a residency? I do not think that I would have been able to get a residency position had I not done PLIC for a number of reasons. Um, I believe that the biggest reason was because of the research, publishing the paper and doing the poster presentations. I got questions about that during every interview. Um, and uh, most of the places that I applied to were out of state. So they all pretty much were asking, you know, what is, like, what did you guys do? Um, and I, I could see on the interviewer's face when I started to talk about the things that we had done, you know, their eyes were kind of lighting up and they were like, wow, your pharmacy school offers this program and this is what you guys did. That's awesome. Because um, it's not something that's common. So I know I specifically remember one of my interviews. Um, she was just asking that was her very first question. She had my CV in front of her and she was like, what is Plague? Tell me about that. Um, so I believe, I don't know, for the application process, um, you know, before the interview, I'm sure that is something that stood out to them and is like, oh, what is this extra specialization? Like, oh, what is this poster presentation? Um, but I absolutely got questioned about it and it came up in every interview and it allowed me to have actual experiences to talk about instead of like, oh, well, I think that I'm a leader and this is, you know, I think that I have done X, Y, and Z that shows that I'm a leader, but this I could say I was trained in it. I had this experience. I did this extra research project. This is what I learned from it. I presented it at a national pharmacy meeting. I got a ribbon at a national pharmacy meeting. Like it was very, very helpful. And besides being able to have these things to talk about during interviews, I feel like it made me a much more well-rounded pharmacist. Like, yes, I don't like the business side of things, but I did have that experience. And now coming into residency, I'm, we're trying to pick research projects now. And it's like, I'm so glad I've at least sort of done this before because um, I feel like that was one of the hardest things is just not even know, not even knowing what you're getting into. But um, yes, if you're, if you are considering residency, absolutely, you should 
try to do like if that's something you're passionate about but it has to be something you're passionate about so what would you what would uh, advice would you offer students who are considering this or just looking at it kind of taking a glance at it to try to decide is it something that you would do again if you were starting over and what would you recommend to them in trying to make the decision on whether they should apply or not so the first thing that you should do is look up innovation what is the definition and what does it mean and how do you even go about doing it because i i think it's becoming more and more evident that you know pharmacy especially needs to be more innovative um, but that was definitely something that I was not well versed in and felt comfortable with like, oh yeah, sure, we're innovative. Well, how are you innovative? Um, so that would be the first step if you're considering plague is to make sure you really understand, you know, yes, everyone talks about leadership, but are you actually a leader? Are you actually doing things to learn how to be a better leader? And then are you applying them? because you can be a leader at home, you can be a leader at work, you can be a leader in your friend group, you can be a leader at the gym. Like you don't have to just be a leader at school um, and see if that's something that you're interested in. And then, um, I mean, quality outcomes, you're, you're just gonna have to get used to that. But for deciding whether or not you should do PLIC, I think the first thing I would look into is innovation and then um like look at what are your what are your long-term goals i think this could help a pharmacist going into any practice setting but um it's really important that you aren't just doing it to put it on your resume because it is a lot of extra work it's a lot of projects that are going to be weird and uncomfortable because we've <laughs> not we've not been forced to do work like this before you know doing those group projects and it's like answering hard questions and thinking outside the box which is really, <laughs> it's really hard to do it is. Um, so just i think it's doable you can it's not going to be a matter of can you fit it in your schedule but are you passionate enough about it that it's something that is worth taking time away from other things to do? Now that you're starting residency, what do you, what does it look like for you a year from now, two years from now? What do you want to be doing? Do you have kind of an idea of where you want to go and how Click might play into those choices? Absolutely. Um, I am planning on applying for PGY2. Um, so that is something that is very daunting, especially because we just barely finished the application <laughs> process for PGY1. Um, and then after that, I would like to be a board certified critical care pharmacist and work in a, a community hospital in the ICU as part of a, an ICU team. Um, and I think that Flake will be involved in, in every aspect of that um, because I will be, you know, hopefully rounding with a team of healthcare providers, you know, nurses, doctors, dietitians, respiratory therapists, the whole uh, gamut. So just being able to be a leader and a voice for pharmacy in these settings. Um, you know, luckily, the field is changing enough that people are used to pharmacy being clinical, I think, more so at this point than maybe when I was like first getting into pharmacy school. Um, but it's so hard to differentiate yourself, especially in the saturated market that pharmacy is. It can be very, you can take it and be very discouraged or you can sort of take it as a challenge and see like, okay, well, how can I show my value? How can I add to this? Um, so that's sort of my long-term goals. Um, it's, I feel like even in my first three weeks of orientation at residency, it has come up. Um, I'm the, the lead resident right now, so that's scary right off the bat to be the lead resident. Um, there's, I have three co-residents, so there's four of us total. 
Um, but this particular hospital, you know, we've already had, uh, they're a lean hospital. And we learned about lean Six Sigma and Plick. So luckily, you know, all the other co-residents were like, what is lean? We had a big um, lecture on it. And I was like, oh yeah, I learned about this. So it wasn't the first time I was doing it. And they talked about PDSA cycles. Okay. One of my, um, we had to come up with a development plan with SMART goals. And one of my SMART goals is that I want to find something to do a PDSA cycle with before, you know, October. Um, so it's just, it's funny how these things just sort of pop up and you're like, oh yeah, I forget. And then I forget that not everyone else did plague and it like nobody else, not everyone else has this background. Um, I, I think sometimes some of the students think I'm making things up or pretending <laughs> they're in use until you get out and see them and you're like, oh yeah, that really is a thing out here. Yeah. So, and I think I, I, I see more hospitals going toward the Lean Six Sigma and utilizing those tools as more of just an everyday kind of toolkit for the hospital. So I don't think it's probably uncommon for most of you from the pro this program and just the college that went out to residencies. That's probably something everybody's seeing or at least hearing about. Yeah. So, well, I want to hear about the PDSA when you choose what it is okay. and do it okay. because that would be very interesting even as a kind of on a side note for the quality outcomes class. I'm going to ask you to record a, a record, do another recording with me and walk through how the PDSA went when you, did it from start to finish in a professional setting. Sure. So I'm going to put a plug in for that right now. So keep, yeah. me, keep me up to date on that one. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for taking the time to do this and to do this for the students that are considering the program, um, because I'm sure that this is going to be something that's very helpful for them and in, um, in making some choices. Absolutely. It's been, it's been a pleasure.